Hey, what's good guys? This is Martin and as you can tell I'm editing the video right now and I figured I'd say this really quickly but there's a 30% sale going on across all my websites so all my kits are on sale that includes the B1 kit which is my latest kit um, that includes the Hyatizer that includes the bundle with all my kits so you can get the bundle with all my kits including the Hyatizer for less than $60 which is the best price there's ever been so if you want to check it out you probably should right now because the sale ends on Friday which is in two days so I would go and check it out and yeah, I'm just gonna let you keep watching the video. I'm sorry for interrupting. Hey, what's good everyone? This is Martin and it's the second time I record this video. I had this 30 minute video explaining everything in detail and I open up DaVinci Resolve. I put the video and I see that my microphone didn't get picked up correctly. And I was like, damn, but I really want to get this video pushed out today. So I'm going to record it again still. Um, what's good everyone? Sorry for the t-shirt list. It's insanely hot in this room the summer is approaching here in uruguay so i cannot turn on the fan or the ac because it, it's gonna get picked up really badly in the microphone but today we have a new video today we have a kind of jace orchestral type beat regalia if you want i don't know if you've heard famous 2 there's a track uh by jace called famous 2 and it's what i kind of base myself to make this beat on um so yeah this is jumbo duffel studio you already heard the beat Remember to get hydrated, man. It's really hot right now. Um, well, as you can see, this is a pretty big FL Studio project. Um, so I really don't know how I'm gonna approach this and how I'm gonna explain how I made this beat because it's kind of really confusing. So let's just start little by little, okay? Um, as you can see, this is an orchestral beat. There's a lot of layers going on. And so I think it would be best if I started explaining everything in the order that I made it and why I made it. So when you're making beats like this for Jace or not for Jace, but when you're making like orchestral compositions like this one, you need to keep into account one thing. And it's that your main focus should all the time and like all around the beat on your melody. Your melody is the most important aspect of it. You know, if your melody is off, then the, it doesn't matter how good your drums are. So all your focus needs to be on the melody right here. So I started adding this piano right here. I'm gonna show it real quick. It's a halftime piano. And I wanted to go for a, like a very evil sound, like something tragic just happened. Um, and I made this MIDI. You can see a little bit of tension and notes like this one, this D sharp and this C sharp. Adding notes that are close to each other gives some tension like that. You shouldn't overdo it though, but adding it sometimes like right here, sounds pretty good. Oh, pretty good. That was so weird, pretty good. Um, sometimes I have that weird accent. Um, this is what the melody would sound like without anything. Oops, it's this one. And so, yeah, that was the first step. I have this piano. I copied and pasted over those same notes to a pad and I took out the lower notes because they sounded way too muddy, way too bassy. You need to remember that you're gonna be adding other like bass elements to this melody, like for example, a cello or a violin. So having too much bass can be counterproductive. So I just took out those notes and only kept the high notes. And it's this very windy pad, very earthy pad. I really like it. After that, I added this little tubular bell. It gives out that really intense regalia sound that I like. And it just follows the root notes of the melody. These bells usually should follow the root notes of your melody, so it kind of sounds cohesive. I went and added this string. It's a um, spizzicato, I think it's the term. Let me check. Yeah, it's a spiccato. I, I was mixing pizzicato and spiccato, but it's a spiccato string. So it's like a very short, uh, very plucky sound. And I did these triplets melody and I added halftime to it. Because if I lift it like that, it sounded kind of unbearable. You know, you can play the same sound for three minutes, so I added some halftime to it. 
we move on to this violin. This is Strings A on Elvia Neil by Spitfire Audio. It sounds very nice, very neat, very clean. Added some uh, pizzicato strings here. It sounds like a little plug. It's not made. It's not meant to be a melody by itself, but it's like a tiny layer that plays with the other sounds. Something very important when you're making these melodies is to be cohesive with the sound selection. Because if you're making an orchestral beat, you cannot really add like a synth or a reese bass. I mean, you could, but it would be better if you add sounds that are all from the same family. So if you're playing with strings and piano and more organic sounds, you should keep to that same palette of sounds, if that makes any sense. And that's why I made the sound decisions that I made throughout this entire beat, you know? You can hear that almost everything except the pad and even the pad because it sounds very windy it's all very organic natural sounds you know no sense none of that we have this little bass over here which again follows the root note of the melody if you're wondering what sound this is this is um cassette orchestra the classic from Olvion solstice this is my favorite sound for brass you just Put this preset and you take it a few octaves down. So then I added this little brass. So the note that's actually playing all this time is A sharp because due to the halftime you cannot hear the notes that are playing here in this little part or here. But you can hear the decay of those notes. So. You know how in FL, uh, I mean in anything, you have something called AVSR, which is this little thing right here, this envelope. Um, this is how a note plays. So if it if it looks like this, the note plays, and when it ends playing, it stops. Like when you stop pressing the note, it stops. But for example, the release of the note is how long it plays after you stop playing it. It's like a little reverb. And you can hear this little like release tail after the note stops playing. So that's why you can hear like a little bit of like a little like a little hint of that beat on the A. And it sounds nice, it's like a little detail. Also here. But these notes are not playing. Like as you can see the only difference is that little residue um, B note that you can hear. Kind of like a phantom note if you want. We have this little brass that adds um, rhythm to the melody. It's following the root notes, but it's like telling you, okay, something's coming, you know, the, the beat's gonna drop, uh, like he, like here's coming like the rupture of the beat. So that's why I like it. it. It gives some anticipation to the melody. We have these strings. Like, once you have already made your main melody and it's structure and nice and you hear it and it sounds good, you just start adding strings and different orchestral elements. Don't overdo it, but you can keep on adding layers and little textures and stuff that sounds cool like this. We move on to this little drum loop, which I have time and I EQ'd out. that uh, starts sounding around here where the beat is gonna it's gonna start. So it's like a little, again, it's like a riser. I use it almost like a riser. I'm gonna leak it, but this is Cerveros from Audio Imperia on Contact and it has a bunch of drums loop like this ones that sound awesome. We have this little guitar, electric guitar with halftime again. And again, you cannot hear this note play, but you can hear what, what's left of, of this note, like the reverb of this note, you can hear it over this one. And it's I think it's very nice to play with details like that. Because even though if you're gonna hear this note, you can hear its reverb here. I like that. We move on to this piano which is the same main melody but I kind of trashed out the piano there's a bunch of delay to it and codic 
which is a downgrading audio plugin. It's free. You can get it on the link down in the description. If I, if I forget to put it, it's just less.io and you can get Kodak for free. And again, I eq out the piano because I wanted it to sound like almost as if you grabbed the piano and you passed it through dirt and sand and then you played it back. That's how I feel it would sound. And again, we have the most important piece of the melody. The main melody I feel like in this beat is, is these strings. And I'm gonna leak what sound I'm using because this is sauce and it's the string ensemble by Native Instruments and I'm using the tremolo articulation. That's why it sounds like the string is almost like shaking. That's the tremolo sound. Um, and yeah, I didn't change anything, but it sounds like this. And then orchestral beats like this, you should always have like a top melody that is the strongest and the one that's leading the rest of the melodies. And I think it's the strings in this beat. And on most regalia beats, you have strings like this one. That basically just like, I don't know, they're the star of the beat, if that makes any sense. So once we add all of that together, we get this. It might be a little bit hard to uh, like explain how I made this melody because there's so many elements to it, but I hope I could explain myself. So here I basically came in with the drums and again, your main focus on this beat will be your melody. You want to have a really uh, crisp, very clean sounding orchestral melody. Um, you need to focus on, you need to have a set focus. Okay, do I want this to sound sad? Do I want this to sound evil? Do I want this to sound kind of tragic like I made here? I wanted a melody that sounded like something very tragic had just happened and that's why I made it. So. All the sounds I'm using are from my B1 kit, link down in the description, and the plug that I'm gonna show I'm using on my hi-hats, it's called the hi-hatizer, link in the description as well. Um, and this is what the drums sound like. Let me show you real quick. percussive elements are on one third step so if you come into this clap right here for example and you listen to this right here if you play it by itself it doesn't make much sense but it's on one third step so I'm gonna show how I made everything from scratch in the drums I start with the clap as usual because the clap I feel like it's an element that tells you how much space you have left to use. You know, you put down a clap and you hear, okay, this is what the beat sounds like so far. I can add certain amount of hi-hats, certain amount of 808s, um, like it tells you how much space you have. So it's like a regular clap and then this little roll over here. Um, I moved on to the hi-hats, which without the hi hatizer which is this little plugin that we have going on right here. It lets you control the reverb of your hi-hats, the reverse of your hi-hats. It, it has different reverse algorithms, you know, a bunch of options, half timing and everything. And it's what I use on all my hi-hats. So without it, it would sound like this. And with it, it would sound like this. So the foundation for these uh, hi-hats is actually a triplet hi-hat. So you come right here and you copy and paste it like this. It's in one third step. If you want to set your grid like that, you come in here to the magnet, right click and one third step. And I started taking notes down. So I was like, okay, I don't want this note. Oh shit. I don't want this note and I don't want this note right here. 
and then I started adding roads and adding changes on velocity. The thing is that if you're gonna add like a triplet one third note or uh, hi hat, you don't want it to be too repetitive, you don't want it to get boring, and it can get boring very easily. So I would really play with the velocities like I did here, you know, adding, taking out volume. It makes your uh, hi hat sound more humane, if that makes any sense. And I don't know, it sounds really good to me. The hi hat ties here definitely played, played a really big role in making these hi hats because without it, they would sound super boring, you know? So yeah, if you're interested in getting this plugin, the link is down in the description and it's on sale right now. So then I just added some more drums just to fill out the void, you know? And last but not least, I added the 808s, which as usual, you need to tune your 808s properly, as Nick Mara would say, you just come into your melody, you take down the root notes, then you copy and you paste it, and it sounds like this. So with all the other drums, they would sound like this. So um, one thing that many people don't know that you can do on Apple Studio is something called sliding. So you come in here, you click this little ramp or you press S, I mean S. And basically, you can see that you have a little note that has that little ramp to the end of it. So if I play this note like this, it will slide this note up to E. So you can play with that in a variety of ways. You can play it like this, or you can play it like this. So basically what I'd be doing right here is taking this note one octave down. But another thing you can do is you can turn the velocity of this note down to zero. So basically, you would be sliding down this note to G sharp, but in the process of doing that, you would also turn the volume down to zero. So when this plays, you can hear this G sharp four turning into a G sharp three. So basically going down an octave, but at the same time, you can hear it stop playing. So you can hear it very briefly, just go down in pitch and then just stop playing and I did the same here it adds some bounds and again if you had to turn one third you should do triplets like this and one third step as well so it sounds cohesive so so once we add all of that together we already made our introduction adding and taking out elements and blah 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 we get something that sounds like this right here. Reuse your bottle water. And you can also play with little stops like this. Um, right when the beat drops and when the beat ends. Um, but this is how it would make an orchestral beat for Jays. 
Um, I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, follow me on Instagram. We're about to hit 3K followers. And comment down below what you liked about the video, what you'd like to see next. Um, you can join us on our Discord server. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something today. Um, I'll see you in the next one.